All right, so fractions. So what's my rule? In the inbox, I have one fifth, two tenths, three fifteenths, four twentieths, five twenty fifths, six thirtieths, and seven out of thirty five. In my out box, I have three tenths, one tenth, six thirteenths, four sevenths, eight twelfths, and three twelfths. So stop the video and see if you can figure out why these are in and these are out, and then come back to me. All right, so hopefully you figured out that in the inbox, these are all equivalent fractions. So one fifth is equal to two tenths, two tenths is equal to three fifteenths, three fifteenths is equal to four twentieths, four twentieths is equal to five twenty fifths, five twenty fifths is equal to six thirtieths, and it's equal to seven out of thirty five. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with today. We're going to be looking at equivalent fractions. So in your math notebook, write down your math goal, which is equivalent fractions and anything you know about equivalent fractions, okay? And then come back to me. So, question, what are equivalent, so what are the equivalent fractions and how can you make equivalent fractions? That's what we're dealing with today, all right? So, some of you probably already know what equivalent fractions are. So, equivalent fractions are fractions that represent the same value. They're the same. Okay, so one half is the same thing as three six. So half of something is the same thing as three six, right? Because three is half of six. They are equal, they're equivalent fractions. So how do we get equivalent fractions? We multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number to make it equivalent fractions. Remember fraction bar, whatever I do to the Numerator, I do to the denominator. So if I multiply the numerator by two, I got to multiply the denominator by two. If I divide by two, then I have to divide the denominator by two. So whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So that's in essence what we're doing. So do it with me. Whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. Whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So that's what we are working with today. Okay. So knowing that, write an equivalent fraction for three-fifths, and then we'll see what you came up with. Remember, whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. So go ahead and do that, and then I will do one, and then um, we will see. Okay, so here are some equivalent fractions that I came up for three-fifths. So I multiplied the top and the bottom, by two, and I got three times two is six, five times two is 10, so I got six tenths as an equivalent fraction. Then I did three fifths times three times three. So three times three is nine, five times three is 15, and I got nine fifteenths. And then I did three fifths times four, I multiplied the top and the bottom by four, three times four is 12, five times four is 20, 12, 20. So these are all equivalent. They are all the same. They equal the same thing. So down here, I wrote them down. Three fifths is equal to six tenths, which is equal to nine fifteenths, which is equal to 12 twentieths. And we call that, boys and girls, we call that a uh, fraction chain. So we call it an equivalent fraction chain because it's just a chain of fractions that are equal to the same thing. So when if you hear the word equivalent fraction chain, this is what we're talking about, just fractions that are all equal, okay? And I know you probably came up with some different ones, but as long as you multiply the top and the bottom by the same number and you multiplied correctly, then you should be golden, okay? All right. All right, another way to find equivalent fractions, believe it or not, is using your multiplication chart. So if you have a multiplication chart handy, you can see that here is my three fifths. So three fifths, right? So here's my three fifths. I colored all my three line and my fifth line. So three fifths is the same thing as six tenths, nine fifteenths, 12 twentieths, 15 over 25, 18 over 30, 21 over 35, 24 over 40, 27 over 45, 30 over 50, 33 over 55, 36 over 60. So those are all equivalent fractions. So let's try a different one. Okay, so let's try two, 
two, six. Okay. So two, six. Two, six is the same thing as four, twelves. At six, eighteen, eighteen, twenty-four. So you understand how to do that. So you just find the fraction here, and then you just follow along and see what they correspond, and that's how you can find um, equivalent fractions on a multiplication chart. You can also do it the other way. Let me show you. Okay, so I just did it the other way, but it's the same thing. Three and the five, three fifths. So three fifths is the same thing as six tenths, nine fifteenths, twelve twentieths, fifteen over thirty-five, and so on and so on. So let me show you a different color, a different fraction. Okay, so now I'm looking at four sevenths. So four sevenths is the same thing as eight fourteenths, twelve twenty-first, sixteen twenty-eighths, twenty thirty-five. So now this is a, a good trick. But unfortunately, most of the times, unless you make your own multiplication chart, you're not allowed to use a pre-made multiplication chart on test in fifth grade. So unless you want to dedicate time to make your own before you take a test, then this will totally work. But if not, I recommend whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom, right? Because that will always, always work. All right. Just a, a trick I wanted to show you. All right, so how can we change three fifths to 18 thirtieths? So basically, how did I go from three fifths to 18 thirtieths? So, any thoughts? Yeah, you would need to multiply, right? To get from three to 18, what do you need to multiply by? Three times what is 18? By six, right? So if I multiply that by six, what do I got to do to the bottom? Multiply it by six. What's five times six? Thirtieth. So what did we use? We multiplied by six, our multiplier. We call that a multiplier, what you multiplied by. Remember, we, I, said, I think I said it in the last lesson, multiplier. So we multiply both by six in order to get from three-fifths to 18 thirtieths. They're equivalent fractions. So three-fifths is equal to 18 thirtieths. They're equal. I just got to multiply it by six. Or remember when we did the splits, split it six times. Then I get 30 pieces. So 18 out of 30 pieces is the same thing as three out of five, five pieces. All right, now it says, how can we simplify 18 thirtieths? Hmm. So simplify means I want to get it to the least smallest common fraction, right? So 18 thirtieths. Hmm. How do I do that? And the other one we multiplied, right? So maybe we need to divide, right? To simplify, remember, we need to use division when we're simplifying, we divide. So now I gotta think, hmm, what can I divide 18 and 30 by? Hmm, so can I divide? I always start with my lowest number, so I start with a two. Does 18, can 18 be divided by two? Yes. Can 30 be divided by two? Yes. So two would work, but let's see if something else would work. Four, can I divide 18 by four? Hmm. I'm not quite sure, so you know what? I'm gonna stick with my two and see what happens, all right? Okay, so I go in ahead and I divided 18 divided by two. Make sure you write this down. And then 30 divided by two, write it down exactly like the way I have it. So 18 divided by two is nine. 30 divided by two is 15. Can I simplify even more? If I can, I'm gonna try. So does can I divide nine by two? No, so that's not gonna work. Can I divide it by three? Yes, so I'm gonna divide both the top and bottom by three. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. Okay, so if you divided both the top and bottom, whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. If you divided both by three, nine divided by three is three, 15 divided by three is five. Can I divide any more? Well, can I divide three by two? No. Can I divide three by three? Yes, but can I divide five by three? No, I can't. So then this is my lowest, I can't go any further, okay? So we can simplify 18 thirtieths to three fifths, okay? Okay, so you try one now. How can we change three fifths to 27 out of 45? So try that one and then come back to me. Okay, so how did I change it? 
hopefully you multiplied by nine, right? Top and bottom by nine, the numerator and denominator by nine. Because to get from five to 45, I got to multiply five times nine to get 45. So if I multiply this by nine, I got to multiply that by nine. Three times nine is 27. So my multiplier was nine. Okay, try this one. How can we simplify 27 out of 45? So remember, if we simplify, that means we are dividing. Anytime we say simplify, we mean divide. Divide the top and bottom by the same number. Go ahead and try this one and then come back to me. Okay, I did this two different ways. So if I wasn't sure, I tried two. 27 does not, cannot be divided by two. So then I did three. Can, three times what is 27? Yep, that works. Does three go into 45? Yep, that one works. So I did 27 divided by three is nine. 45 divided by three is 15. And then I said, is that my smallest I can go? Can I divide two by nine? No. Can I divide it by three? Yes. Can I divide 15 by three? Yes. So that I divided both by three and I got three fifths. Some of you probably already knew that there's a bigger number that they have in common, right? Other than three. So what other number do they have in common? Nine, because nine can be divided into 27 and nine can also be divided into 45. So 27 divided by nine is three, 45 divided by nine is five is three fifths. So one strategy is to start with the lowest number, start with two, then try three, then try four and keep moving up and see if you can divide in, into both numbers by that number. Um, if you clearly see, because you know your multiplication tables pretty quickly, and you clearly saw that 27 times 9 times 3 is 27, and it's also 9 times 5 is 45, then use that strategy, whatever strategy works for you. If you don't know your multiplication chart table, get a, multipl get a multiplication chart from me in the classroom if you haven't done so already, and then um, use that, and that will also help you, okay? All right, so what did we learn today? So in your math notebook, please write down what you learned. Oh, let me erase this. Okay, so in your math notebook, write down what you learned today. Um, your proof of learning by solving a problem, so do a problem, and then a reflection or a question. Do you have a question about how to find a common, how to find equivalent fractions? or a question, anything like that, or do you have a reflection on how to use this? Like, how can you use finding equivalent fractions in real life? All right. Mm -hmm.